Hello, welcome to Mogli TV. Today we're going to go through five tips to make your VJ clips a lot more efficient, more versatile. Whether you just started creating your own content or you've been doing it for a while, I think there's something here for everyone. So let's get into it. Tip number one, edit at 120 BPM and 60 frames per second. While you can edit at any VPM or the frames per second of your choice, the 120 and 60 makes a lot of sense for a number of reasons. 120 BPM is kind of the middle ground for a lot of different kinds of uh, dance music. So editing within 120 BPM will allow you to speed things up or you could slow things down if you're playing slower styles of music. 60 frames per second allow you to have that extra frame rate to slow things down if necessary without having jerky motion in your clips. So that's really good. Another thing to bear in mind is that all these figures fit nicely into each other. So you will have a set number of frames to define any action that's happening in your VJ clips. So you know 60 frames will be uh, one second and that will give you two beats. So every beat uh, will be every 30 frames, which makes it really easy to work out where you are on your timeline if you keep frame editing to actually easily tailor your motion to a set BPM. Tip number two, edit to music. When I say edit to music, I don't mean have music playing in the background while you're editing your clips. What I actually mean is to have a snippet of music. Uh, ideally, you could grab a one bar uh, loop from anything like Ableton, or if you go any other door that might come with uh, loop packs, or uh, you could just as easily grab uh, your favorite track and just chop out a uh, one bar loop that you can then put on your timeline so that when you're editing your motion, uh, you actually got a reference of sound that will give you some dynamic feel to give that whole loop a uh, much more fluid motion than if you were just editing a four by four straight beat with no other nuances in it. Having the music that might inspire you to actually tweak the animation in more subtle ways that will overall give the clip a much better impact. While also incorporating cycles that might not be immediately obvious or come to mind as you're editing motion. Uh, you might have a snare drum that comes in at some random time within that one bar loop and you could incorporate that into your animation. Although that might not fit every single track that you play this to, it will add another layer of complexity to the overall motion of the clip, making it more dynamic with music. Also, while you're editing to music, it's a lot easier to compose your animation uh, using the feel of elements that are not necessarily uh, rhythmic. Things like chord changes, sound effects that might come in, uh, delays, all this kind of thing. Like when you've got the music there as an inspiration, it will push your animation into ways that you wouldn't have thought otherwise. Tip number three, use alpha channels. I've got a whole other tutorial on why alpha channels are very useful. So I'm not going to get into the detail of it, but just bear in mind that whenever you're constructing VJ clips, it's a good idea to consider whether having an alpha channel would actually make the clip a lot more versatile and easier to blend with other clips later on. Tip number four, create isolated elements. What do I mean by isolated elements? Isolated elements are, for example, all these clips on this layer that I've got here. They're all from my VJ pack Beatagon available on Gumroad. And basically, as you can see, there are all these animations that don't touch the edges of the frame they're in. Just there for you to manipulate and use, which is the beauty of using VJ clips rather than making a really intricate final animation. I'm an advocate of making building blocks that you can then exploit with the power of your VJing software to make endless permutations and the unforeseen with it. As you can see here, we've got this clip playing and if I just apply the preset Fibonacci spiral from the radial cloner here and just drop it on there, it works very nicely because none of the elements within the animation are cropped by the frame itself. If alternatively I apply the Fibonacci spiral onto this other clip, which is a solid background clip, which as you can see, touches the edges throughout. What we get are these straight line crops going on, which might be what you're after, but 
Oh, I know it's versatile as keeping the integrity of the object that you had in your animation, which you can then manipulate as if it was a true single element rather than a video frame that you're manipulating. Uh, using things like iterators and cloners works a lot better when your source content is not touching the edges so that you don't get squared off cut off areas. If you combine this with a previous tip, which is to use alpha channel, you'll have a toolbox of extremely useful things that can be used to build up incredibly complicated things just from a few source elements that you can reuse in many ways to many, many different effects. Tip number five, start your clips with drama. What do I mean by starting your clips with drama? Something like a flash would be what I classify as drama within a VJ clip. Starting your clip with a flash makes it extremely useful in a manner of ways. Starting with a flash means that the end of your animation doesn't actually need to correspond with the first frame of your animation because the transition is effectively the flash, which makes it a lot easier to do clips that loop using things like uh, particle emitters and that kind of thing that can be really, really hard to actually uh, loop seamlessly without some very complicated workarounds, math, and everything else. You can see this clip is playing and there's that flash. That flash is handy for a number of reasons. Uh, it actually marks the beginning of a bar. So every four beats, there's a flash. Now, if we retrigger that clip, you can see that it flashes instantly, which is very handy because it gives emphasis to the beginning of the clip. So whenever you trigger a clip, you get that impact happening. You can use this as a performance tool where you can actually strobe the clip to whatever speed you might want to strobe it to, which can be very useful. So those are my five tips for better VJ clips. Remember, this is just tips. There are not rules. It's handy to have a few pointers as to how to make your content more efficient in any case. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Let me know any comments you might have uh, down below or if you've got any suggestions for future tutorials, please let me know all the comments. Thanks for watching. Uh, as always, please like and subscribe as it really helps uh, my channel and it helps me to continue creating tutorials. All the clips uh, used throughout are from my pack available on Gumroad, uh, Beat to Gum. Hopefully I'll see you next time.